and welcome to Grandad Reviews. Now, recently, Fuji released the uh, 70 to 300 zoom lens. Now, this is a great little lens, fantastic, just for going on walks with. It's lightweight, AF is good, the range is reasonable. You're on 70 to 300 mil. It's probably one of my favorite lenses that I use at the moment. They also have, and this is what I take as a walker when I go out uh, and I want something to cover a, like a landscape or a whole range, have a 16 to 80. So my go-to kit basically is camera body, these two lenses, and then I'm covering from 16mm to 300 mil. And it's brilliant. But then Tamron jumped on the wagon and they brought out 18 to 300. So it covers near enough both of these. Now I've not got the uh, Tamron 18 to 300. I've not used it. Uh, I've seen a few reviews on it and they're all pretty uh, positive reviews. Seems to be a reasonably good quality lens with a fantastic range. But you know me, I like to find alternatives. So what we're going to look at today is a mystery lens. We'll take this out. We'll do some mainly stills tests. I don't think it's really a lens for video, but we might give it a go. But we'll test its AF. Um, this particular version I've got is a bit well used, but we'll see what we get. So let's go out. Take some shots, then I'll let you know what this lens is and if I think it's worth as an alternative. Because at the moment, this 70 to 300 and the Tamron 18 to 300 is very hard to get hold of. They're all pre order or back order at the moment. And also, because they're so new, there's nothing on the used market. So you're paying full price for these no matter where you get them from. Even if you can find them on second hand, you're still going to be paying a good amount of money. Whereas this one, been out for a long, long time. You can still get it new, a lot cheaper than these two. And on the used market, yeah, it, the price is very wildly. So this is why I'm recommending this one. Or I've got to show you if it's any good. I don't know if I'm going to recommend this to you. So let's get out there, take some shots, and see what we get. I'm back out in the courtyard, and we've got on our mystery lens. Now, I was going to compare it to the 70 to 300 and the 16 to 80, but I thought initially I'll just do a very quick test. So we'll do the near to far. See how quick it focuses, see what the image quality is like. I won't try it in video because it's not a video lens. Um, so we'll just do some very quick basic tests here. See how we get on, being as I'm stuck in the courtyard at the moment. And then when I get a chance to get out, I'll take the other lenses with us and we'll do a, a more in-depth and better comparison. So let's start with our near to far. So we're on a very familiar Set up. I've got the lens set to AFS. I am at 16mm, 3.5. See how close we can get. So just there. So that's our near. We'll turn to our far near yeah. there yeah. seventy mil. Yeah. How close can I get? I'm still wide open. Oh, I think that's as near. Yeah. Yeah. 
from Nip Medium nip Let's do 100 mil Ooh, I'm Closer No That's nip Let's do two hundred mil. Yeah. Near, medium near, and three hundred mil. We can get pretty close, so that's about it. Near. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. Ah. Oh, they were pretty good. Let's try it out in a bit more light. So sixteen mil again. Yeah. Ah. Seventy mil. Yeah. Ah. Hundred mil. Yeah. Ah, uh, two hundred mil. That's where I'm now. Yeah. Ah, uh, three hundred mil. Yeah. Ah. Uh, Yeah, again a bit of hunting, but not too bad. So let's just stick that in AFC. We'll go to a drive. Let's do it on high. So I'll do that and I'll walk forward. Yep. We'll do that at 16 mil.
there's a few quick near to far tests. I'm gonna do now is just do my standard quality test. What we do is we'll keep this at the same kind of size, so 300 mil, 200 mil, 100 mil. Okay, 70 mil. And let's go to 16 mil. I don't know if I can get that close, but nope. There. So that was wide open. 16 mil. 70 mil, 200, uh, 100 sorry, and 200, and then finally 300. There we go, we've got that, lock on to that. Yeah, it's got it back. Yep, so they're going to be the quick tests I'm doing just now. Uh, we'll just see what those results are like. And yeah, it handles great. It's uh, not a bad weight on the camera, reasonably well balanced, and it's got a good range. A useful, useful lens. The only thing I can say is the AF is not as good as a Fuji native lens, but it's not far off. It's very usable. Um, I'm very happy with it. So let's go and have a look at the uh, results on the computer. Right, so if you hadn't already guessed, the mystery lens was the Tamron 16-300 Canon EFS fit lens. So it's a crop sensor lens again by Tamron for the Canon system. And obviously I've got it on the Fringer Pro 2 adapter. And as you can see, it's a good lens. It's got a good range from 16 all the way up to 300. So if you just want one lens to take out with you that covers everything, this does it. Slightly wider than the new one they brought out for Fuji, the 18 to 300. Got vibration control, as they call it, or OIS, OIS as Fuji calls it. Um, you can do manual focusing on it. It's got a, you can see it's got a little lock to stop uh, creep. And you've got your two switches on there for your VC and your AF. Focusing on there. Now, as I said, this is a heavily used version I've got here. It's got a little bit of fungus in it. So, I would say if you've got a better quality one, then you'd get better results than me. But the AF's okay, it's usable, it's not quite as fast as Fuji's own lenses, uh, but yeah, I'm quite happy with it. The image quality is good. Um, okay, it's a slow lens, and we're working from 3.5 to 6.7 long end, which is the same as the 18 to 300 they brought out. So, what will your options be if you didn't have this? If you were just going Fuji, a cheap option would be to go with the 15 to 45 XC and the 50 to 230 XC. That would cover a similar kind of range. So, price wise, if you were to go with these two new. Looking down here on a bit of paper, so I remember. You're looking at two fifty nine for that, three seventy nine for that new. So you can look six hundred six hundred and thirty eight pound. Used one oh nine. Used two fourteen, and this is on MPB's website. You've got 
warranty and that with that. So I'm just sticking with those prices. So you're looking at 323. This new is 499 used 229 on MPB at the moment. I paid 90 pound for it. It's a well used one. As I said before, if you're adding in the Fringer adapter, I wouldn't buy this on its own. I'd only buy this if you've already got the Fringer adapter or you're intending to use Canon lenses. So this splits the price down because if you just went with this new, with just this lens, new, you're looking at 849 for the whole set. Used, you're looking about 409. So doing it on its own, not worth it. If you want to step up, what I carry with me normally is obviously the Fuji 16 to 80 f4, faster lens, and the Fuji 70 to 300. Again, faster lens. So these two covering the same range, but are faster. That's obviously a fixed f4. And this one, I forget, is 4 to 5.6. So it's about half a stock faster. The XC versions, yeah, 4.5 to 6.7 on the long end, 3.5, 5.6. So the speed of these two is comparable to the Tamron 16 to 300. So prices for these, if you wanted to do it this way, new, the 16 to 80 is £769. And the 70 to 300 at the moment is 729 if you can get it. So that gives you 1498 for the two. Used, you can get these for about 524 from MPB. Can't get any new used ones of these. You might find one on eBay, possibly. So this makes sense, as I previously said, if you're going to use Canon lenses on your Fuji or more than one. If you split this down, I've got six lenses. So let's split it that way. So new, this and this, if I split this between the six lenses, is basically costing me £559. But used, if I brought this in good condition for 229 this would be 264 That's what it would have cost me. So that's how I'm looking at it. As a lens itself, it's quite well built. It's easy to handle. It's not that heavy, to be honest. It's got a fantastic range, 16 to 300. I only have to carry one lens with me. And personally, I think if I just want to go out for a quick walk or whatever and just want to take a body and a lens, I'm going to take this from now on. So to summarise, yes, I do recommend this. If you want a single lens to carry around with you just for with the kids on holiday or any quick snaps, shall we say, I'd highly recommend this as long as you're going to do, as long as you're going to make a collection of Canon lenses with the Fringer adapter to make this Fringer adapter cheaper. If I just wanted a cheap same range, I would go to the 2XC lenses, the 15 to 45 and the 50 to 230. So I was going to go cheap, but if you wanted the best that Fuji can offer at the moment for doing that same range, 16 to 80 and the 70 to 300. I think this is a great option. So if you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. It helps the channel. If you want to see more videos like this, hit that subscribe button. Till next time, see you later.